55, because it has a new rail bearing, it's quite a bit different. Um, HD5, if you do not clean, wipe, and lubricate these bearings every 30 hours, they will seize up. And if they seize up, it's not an easy job to get to them. See, there's two bearings here. And see, I'm going to rotate this. You can't see it. Down through this slot right here. Back in there. I'll get a light. There's two more, one here and one here. Two more bearings right on this rail. You have to lubricate those as well. So these two and these, these two up here and these two here must be lubricated every 30 hours or they will lock up. These under here, you can lubricate as you do the HD4, which means that uh, once every week, two weeks, depending on how much dust they have on them, you spray it down, wipe, wipe it, spray it down, lubricate, and then wipe it again. Move it back and forth to get the bearings in here some lubrication. And this, these, we're going to go into detail how to grease these in a few minutes. This is the grease that I use. This is a mobile grease. And what you're looking for is a, a rating of an NLGI of one. This is a lithium base grease and uh, brown grease. And it works pretty good. But again, it's not available in the small tubes that I've been able to find. Um, so I use the large tube. What's the recommended cleaning procedure for an HD5? This is an HD5 and you can see I've been working it. I work it without dust control. Um, the fine dust, I recommend that you run a filter to suck that up. And then occasionally the other dust, the other dust will settle down on your project and then you can vacuum that up. But I have a fine, I left this one so that uh, we could do some testing on the HD5. And, I found after 30 hours, even in extremely dusty situations, that uh, it's a good time to clean your rail and re-grease it. Because you go much beyond that, what comes up is the, the bearings, which are, there's one here and one over there, the bearings themselves seize up. So you've got to clean it up, grease it, and then you can work another 30 or 40 hours. So, depending on the dust conditions. If it's extremely dusty, I would not go more than 30 hours. If there's not much dust, then you're okay to go 40 or 50 hours based on um, how well your unit does. Now, there's wipers on these bearings that will wipe. And when these bearings start getting a little bit dry, the first thing you'll notice is that it doesn't, when it wipes, it doesn't really clean all the dust off. Okay, so you see it, the dust here and it starts building up a little bit. So when you start to see that, it's time to stop, clean everything up, and re-grease it, and then you can start again. So to, to clean it up, basically it's the same procedure that I recommended with H4. Put some newsprint down. Take your newsprint and lay it underneath. Check any work piece underneath. Spray it with the silicon spray this is a lubricant spray it dust it you can vacuum it first to get the heavy stuff off i've already done that uh, and then you wipe it down with a, i recommend terry cloth rag like this one a terry cloth that will uh, clean it up you can use microfiber if you want because that's a it's got the loop pattern but i like the old-fashioned towels if you got old towels you can go to goodwill and get them that's where i get mine use those uh, you can get them inexpensively there and they make excellent rags so that's part of the rail I've already cleaned up the other side of the rail as you can see over there I've cleaned it up so the next step obviously would be to move the unit all the way to the left because it's going across the clean rail now and I'll wipe that down the same way that I did the other shield my work piece, a little more loose print down. Shield my work piece. In this 
case I'm going to dry wipe it first because I didn't get the vacuum in the middle so I'll dry wipe that stuff away. Spray it, top and bottom, and then wipe it. Okay, that's step one. You got your rail clean. And all that junk off. The same thing with this unit. Wipe it. Get it as clean as you can. And you grease it. That's the next step. What I recommend is a nozzle like this. It allows you to get in here, put it on top of the grease fitting, and then put your grease gun on there and pump it. You have to use NLG1 rated grease. It's in your owner's manual. It should tell you that uh, you have to have number one grease. Almost everywhere you look, you'll find number two grease. Uh, number one is available from Granger. It's made by Mobile. That's what I use. It's five something a two. So that's what I'm going to do next is inject grease in this one. Then the same way, come down and find this one. And you find it locked. And then inject two to three pumps. And you're going to come up here. You're going to put this on top of here. Inject two to three pumps. The same thing here. This hasn't been wiped down yet, so I'm not going to grease that until after I wipe it down. But it's the same procedure. Just wipe it down, vacuum it, wipe it down, clean it up, and then grease it up, and then you're good for another 30 or 40 hours. If you don't do that, these bearings will seize up. It'll ruin your project, and it'll ruin the bearing if you're not careful. So then you have to disassemble the whole machine to get to these. This all has to come apart. These have to slide off, go on a special holder, and be rebuilt. So, or new ones put on. Same thing with the ones on the back. So this will all have to come off. That whole unit would come off, the bearings in the back would be exposed, and then these all rails, the side has to come off so that these can slide off the end of the rail. So it's not, grease it properly and it'll last a long time. Don't maintain it and you're gonna have some issues. But it is a more rigid, structurally rigid unit. Uh, that's what the D5 gives you. You can't wiggle the router anymore or the spindle. So it's a stronger unit, but with that, you have more maintenance responsibility. Take care of the unit and it'll last a while. Any questions? Let me know. This is the size of the greaser that you'll find on the HD5. It's a very tiny, your grease. Um, coupler does not go over the top it just kind of mates to the surface of it and I recommend squeezing very slowly because it's a smaller hole than uh, your normal grease fittings and it takes a little time to squeeze through that little hole otherwise you get a bunch of grease squirting around it uh, press it on there and hold it tight and then squeeze it it's a five millimeter size so you can check I use this wrench to check and make sure they're tight um, because if you over torque it, you'll strip it right out because it's a very small greaser. It's uh, too small to put a normal, what we think of as normal greaser. It's in. It takes this, requires this very small one. So make sure they're tight, five millimeters, just kind of snug it a little bit.